Hello and welcome to this video in which we will compute the Fourier series coefficients for a discrete time rectified sine wave. So I have here on the screen a, uh, the, uh, the equation for this rectified sine wave and essentially it's just the absolute value. So all the negative bits of the sine wave have been made positive. Now um, it would be possible to just uh, take these x of n's, uh, plug in, uh, plug this x of n into the equation uh, that we have for c sub k, uh, where you just sum up uh, x of n times e to the minus j, uh, all that stuff, and get the c sub k's. But that would be um, inelegant. What we'd like to do is use discrete time Fourier series properties, which I've listed here to achieve the same thing. And so the primary purpose of this video is not necessarily to uh, come up with a, a Fourier series uh, for the uh, discrete time rectified sine wave, but it's mostly to demonstrate how you can use these Fourier series properties to uh, do computations and uh, avoid the uh, kind of nasty summation definition of the Fourier series coefficients altogether. So um, the plan to do this is the following. Okay, what I've drawn here or plotted here are different waveforms. The waveform whose Fourier series coefficients I want is this one on the bottom. You can see that that's a rectified sine wave. And what we'll do to get there is the following. We'll take a uh, rectangular uh, or a waveform with a rectangular pulse uh, and we will multiply that by a sine wave. Both of these will have a fundamental period of 24 and by taking this rectangular uh, waveform and multiplying it by the sine waveform I get half of a sine uh, wave. And then to uh, get the other half, I'll take my first half, shift it to the right by 12, and add it to my original. And so I take this bump, shift it to the right so it's over here, and then add it to my original. And the idea is that um, from a previous video, we know the Fourier series coefficients of R of n. Uh, this uh, rectangular waveform. Um, from a previous video, we know the Fourier series coefficients of a sine wave. Uh, it turns out that if you multiply two signals in the time domain, in the frequency domain, you can evolve them. And uh, because we're talking about discrete time Fourier series coefficients, it turns out to be a uh, periodic convolution, which actually is not nearly as scary as it sounds. So basically, um, we will know the Fourier series coefficients for R because we've computed them already. We'll know them for S. We've computed those. We'll then multiply the two and find the Fourier series coefficients for this waveform I've called V using the convolution property. Then we'll find the Fourier series coefficients of V shifted to the right by 12 using the time shifting property, and then use the linearity property of the Fourier series to find the Fourier series coefficients of X. And once we've done that, then um, I'll show you the results. And then it turns out we can work this another way by um, noting that the product of R times a sine wave um, can be represented in terms of some frequency shifts. And so uh, we'll go back and show you what happens with those frequency shifts and that we do indeed get the same answer. Okay, so that's the plan of attack. Um, I guess we might as well start attacking then. Okay, so um, the first thing we need to do is uh, we need to have the Fourier series coefficients of this rectangular, uh, this periodic square wave. And uh, this was done in a previous video, so um, hopefully you uh, 
remember this or we'll go look it up again if you need to. So in that video we found that A0, and I'll uh, say that the Fourier series coefficients of R, I'll call them A. I'm going to go through a lot of letters here. And so A0 will be 1 half for this case. A sub k, where k is not 0, will be 1 over n. n here is 24. So um, my uh, square wave and my uh, sine wave uh, both have a period of 24. So it's 1 over n e to the minus j k n p minus 1 over n times pi times sine of k n p pi this over n divided by sine k pi over n. Okay, this is the formula for the Fourier series coefficients of a square wave. Now, if we go back to our picture here, uh, you can see that um, the pulse width here is 12 samples, and then it's 0 for 12 samples. So n sub p is 12. Oops, got so many uh, screens going here. I have no idea where I am. There we go. Okay, so NP is 12, and again N is 24. So when I work this whole thing out, I get that these coefficients, I did, by working it out I mean plugging in the numbers here, I have 1 over 24 e to the minus j k 11 over 24 pi sine k pi over 2 divided by sine k pi over 24. Okay, so these are my Fourier series coefficients for the square wave. And I've plotted these, oops, somewhere right here. And this is what they look like. Uh, the magnitude of the Fourier series coefficients, um, a0 again is 1 half, and then they look like this. Every, except for uh, a0, every even coefficient is 0. Uh, the phase looks like this. Okay, so we have now the Fourier series coefficients for Rn. Uh, let's I'll go back to some random drawing. Okay, so we've got these guys. The next thing is to get the Fourier series coefficients uh, for S of n. And again, this was done in the video that introduced the discrete time Fourier series. So um, without even writing down any of the derivation, this is what these Fourier series coefficients look like. And we have that BK is 1 over 2J for K equals 1 minus 1 over 2J for K is equal to minus 1 or equivalently, since these guys are periodic, K is equal to 23 and 0 everywhere else. And so that's what we have plotted here. The magnitude is one half, and the phase angle uh, is uh, basically one over j here. Uh, that has a phase angle of minus pi over two. Uh, minus one over j has a phase angle of pi over two. So these are our Fourier series coefficients for the sine wave. Okay, the next one is going to be a little more complicated. So let's see, we've got this guy. The next thing we need to do is find the Fourier series coefficients for this V of n, where we've multiplied R and S to get V of n. 
Okay, and to see what we should do here, we go back to our whoops, our list of Fourier series properties. And this is going to be the multiplication property. I have two time signals that I multiply, and their Fourier series coefficients are then given by uh, this expression here, which is called a periodic convolution. Uh, I'm basically over one period, so I can go anywhere from, say, 0 to 23, since in our case n is 24, or I can go minus 12 to 11, however you want to do this convolution. The kth Fourier series, con uh, the kth Fourier series coefficient of this product will be given by this sum, uh, where I have the k value here, and then I'm summing over all these values of L. Okay, so um, that's what we need to compute then for our next step. Uh, now, I am stalling because I can't find my... This is awful. Okay, so we want to... Um, uh, do this. Unfortunately, I'm out of time, so we'll pick this up in the next video where we'll actually compute the um, periodic convolution of these Fourier series coefficients, and then um, from there we'll finish. So, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part two.